your left. Um, I have a situation with my intimate partner that many times we get together and we, we argue a lot and I have this need um, that you were saying earlier is inappropriate that I want her to be happy. And I didn't I, say it was inappropriate, I said it was undoable. Okay, right, that's what she keeps telling me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to tell me to be happy, tell me the action to get there. That I can do. If you tell me an action that you predict that if I do that, I'll be happy at the end, it would be helpful. Tell me the action. Don't just tell me to be happy. Don't tell me to have confidence in myself. Tell me what you would like me to do to feel that confidence. The action will get me there, but just telling me what to feel puts me into a paradoxical bind. Okay. Um, well, one of the other things would be um, when we get together, I don't necessarily want to be um, going somewhere with her if she's not in a good mood at that time or if there's some kind of yes. tenseness or and something. And empathize with why I'm not in a good mood and I'll be in one. But telling me that I got to be in a better mood for you to want to go with me gets me in a worse mood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if there's some times when it's over here, it's, uh, I'm, I'm feeling some anxiety about a trip I'm planning to visit my mother soon. And we have a dynamic where she really wants to help me figure out every detail of what I'm doing during my stay, and I like to be left So alone. let me show you how to do it. And I'm afraid that if I talk to her like yes. this, it's going to make matters much worse. Okay, then we'll teach you how, if it does, we'll show you how to enjoy it when it gets worse. Okay. <laughs> but first, let me show you the first thing to do, if we want a person to consider another behavior than the one they're doing, start the communication by showing them that what they're doing is the most precious thing they could be doing. This way, empathy. Start by empathizing with mother's intent in behaving as she does. Mother, I'm guessing that when you jump in and want to uh, show me all the things that could be done, you really care a lot about my enjoying myself on this trip and want to be sure you support that. Oh, yes, yes, there's a lot of things. Yeah, so it's really very important to you that, uh, that I have a good time and you want to contribute to it. Yeah. That's step one. See what I mean? That's what I mean by starting, by showing you understand. Now, the more we're concerned about that behavior, the more important it is to start with this. See, that's why when I work in prisons and this person has been sexually molesting people or raping people, if I would like this person to find another way of behaving, the first thing I got to do is make sure they don't hate themselves for what they're doing. The more they hate themselves for what they're doing, the more they'll continue doing it. So I start by empathizing with what their needs are in doing it. Okay, so you got that step. The next step, what we started off the day with, I tell honestly how I feel. And Mama, I'm feeling torn right now because I. I'm grateful for your intent, but uh, I really have a need to kind of make my own choices here because I think it would be very hard for anybody else to really know what I need, and I need this space to figure it out for myself. So uh, would you tell me what you heard me say, Mother, so I can see if I'm making myself clear? <laughs> so now I know Mother didn't hear me. Now I know Mother didn't hear my needs. She probably heard a rejection. She probably heard that she's not valued. So, but it's important that I not think that her reaction is because of what I said. If I express my feelings and needs, it would be impossible for a person to react this way if they heard it. They would have gotten a gift. They would have the eyes of a little child getting a gift from Santa Claus. That doesn't look like what Mother's looking like right now. So, so Mom, could you tell me what you just heard me say? You don't want me. So you heard it kind of as a rejection, Mother. Of course, how else could I have heard it? 
Well, thank you for telling me you heard it as a rejection, Mother. Uh, notice I didn't say, that isn't what I said. <laughs> See, if you want to make it, if you want to have people understand you differently, never tell them you're misunderstanding me. Never say, that isn't what I said. Say, thank you for telling me that's what you heard. I can see I didn't make myself clear. I'd like to try again, Mother. As I do value very much your offering to help, but I have a need to kind of get my own needs clear and structure my own time. Can you tell me what you hear me say? So you think I don't have any intelligence about helping you. Thank you for telling me that's what you're hearing, Mother. It's, I'd, still, I'd like you to hear it differently. I'd like you just to hear my needs, that I have a real need to kind of sort things out for myself and structure my own time. Could you tell me what you heard? See, you have a need to kind of get clear for yourself what you want and to figure things out. Thank you, Mother. See how easy it is to get empathy from a jackal? Just about three ear pulls and I got it, right? <laughs> Now, there are some eight-pull jackals, too, I know. <laughs> but I can tell from how sweet you are, your mother is a three-pull jackal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, you mentioned...